to be used for the anointing of all who suffer illness. Behold the oil of catechumens to be used for the anointing of our catechumens on Saturday morning in preparation for their baptism at the Easter Vigil. Behold the sacred prism, oil mixed with sweet perfume. This oil will be used at the Easter Vigil and throughout the year for baptism and confirmation for anointing those to be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Each 
God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred suffering, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of pride. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then when the whole assembly of Israel is present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he has clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. 
If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. The Eucharist is Christ. The Eucharist is God. It is the source and the summit of the Christian life. According to our Catechism 1324. And then from that source and summit, we go into the world to bring about God's salvation in the world, in all the ministries of the church, or in and through the ministries of the church. And then we come back celebrating the source and the summit of the Christian life. Without the Eucharist, there is no church. And with the Eucharist, priesthood, we are at the core of this mystery of the sacrament of this holy order is to bring people back to God. To bring the broken, the miserable, the weak humanity back to the Lord. It has been that way, broken and miserable and weak since Adam and Eve lost the original grace. And we have, as we know it, original sin. So important is this for our these two sacraments that we priesthood bringing the people back to God, the highest law of the church. We call it Canon Law 1527. Yes, and you've heard it many times, Salus Animarum Suprema Lex. The salvation of souls is the supreme law. Having said this, these are the two sacraments. We are not just reminded of wherein we are celebrating, not reenacting, but celebrating the mystery of the Lord. Very, very important. The mystery of the Lord. With this celebration, Lent, in every parish that celebrates this, ends this evening. And we begin what is called the sacred Paschal Triduum. Three doom, three, three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday until the evening. Let me see, well, where is Thursday? Well, if we know that the Sunday evening Mass, not the Sunday evening Mass, but the Saturday evening Mass, is already the Lord's day, meaning Sunday Mass, not, not even anticipated. 
Then Friday begins this evening. And it ends, of course, with the sundown this evening ends tomorrow night. So that's why we have three days. Past is the Passover, the passing over. Sacred, holy. Having said all this, the question is, why are we here? It's a very important question. I am sure our easy, maybe, or immediate answer is, well, we are reliving or we are reenacting, in quotation, the history, the event or events of what Jesus said and did. That's not what the church has been insisting for the last 2,000 years. Of course, all our events start on this evening, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday, meaning the Eucharist and the crucifixion and the resurrection are all related to what is called or what are called historical events. But we are not so much celebrating history although what we are celebrating are rooted concretely in the great saving events or deeds of God, Dabar Yahweh, the saving deeds of God. What we are celebrating tonight, again, not so much of history, but the memory or the mystery the dangerous memory of the mystery of Jesus. And why dangerous? Because first, we are celebrating tonight is the memory of the Spirit of God's holiness in and through Jesus. The Spirit of God's holiness why is that so? Well, because Jesus says in Mark 1, 15, I have chosen you to be one with me. Discipleship, isn't it? Oneness, union with Christ, with God, or living the divine will. We've heard of that many, many times. Living in the gift of the divine will. The saints have taught us that in the last 2,000 years. Culminating, of course, in the great writings of Louisa Picurita in her 36 volume writings, only in relation to the divine will. I have chosen you to be one with me. But Jesus did not stop there. We are here with that reason, celebrating the spirit of holiness, meaning we are bringing upon us the memory of God's call for us to be one in the holiness of God. But not only that, Jesus says, I have chosen you to be one with me and the same verse, Mark 1, 15, to be sent. Apostleship or ministry, mi yes, ministry or mission or stewardship. 
This is not either or. Both and discipleship and apostleship. And therefore, as we are here celebrating the spirit of God's holiness, meaning accepting God's call for us to be holy. As he says, right from the Old Testament all the way to the New. In Ephesians 1, verse 4, I have chosen you, or God had made you, or have chosen you to be holy before, before the foundations of the world. So, yes, to be holy. But the Lord said, to be sent. To be sent for what? First and foremost, we are here gathered because we are called to conversion. Gathered in faith as we are called to conversion. Why dangerous memory of Jesus? Because as we bring ourselves more and more one, fused, transfigured, as we make ourselves more and more like Jesus, as we become Jesus in the world, what happens? You and I, each one as a community, community of faith, it will not be a church that is adjusting to the ways of the world. It will be a counterculture just like Jesus, meaning a church wherein the world is shaped by and determined by the word of the Lord. These are two different things. Otherwise, we are back to last Sunday, wherein the same people that shouted, Blessed is you, comes in the name of the Lord, the Son of the Son of David. Remember last Sunday, the Passion of the Lord, Passion reading of St. Luke? I'm sure there are many of those people would be shouting, would be the, more or less the same people, not more or less, more rather than less, same people would be shouting as we celebrate tomorrow's Passion reading, crucify him. Because as we have a church that adjusts to the ways of the world, then we are back to Jesus or making Jesus a political messiah, not a spiritual leader. And that has been a problem, we know, of Judas and the Apostles. That has been the problem of the church for the last 2,000 years. Are we a church that is according to the mind and the heart of God, or are we a church that says, Adjournamento, meaning renewal. What's that? Good if it is well understood, but renewal in terms of adjust. Adjust to what? To the ways of the world. Well, I don't think that's what, what Jesus came for. Because if that's what he did, he would not be crucified, no doubt. If what he proclaimed was just a smooth interpersonal relationship, and that's okay, just cut corners and make things easy. You think he would be crucified? Do you think there would be the tragedy of Calvary? No. So dangerous because as we become more and more like Jesus, the whole purpose of this being one in the spirit of holiness in order to be sent is for you and for me and not just individual, as a community of faith, to be for the life of the world. What does that mean? For God's salvation to everyone in the world. And that's why the church is Ecclesia Promundi Vita, the church for the life of the world. One cardinal says that. 
not ecclesia non prose ipsa, meaning a church for itself, which the cardinal well said, when that happens, the church has no meaning in our reason to survive. So, why dangerous? Meaning we are here to celebrate the dangerous memory of Jesus. Because, as Jesus says, greater love than this no one has, as you and I will become more and more Jesus. Transfigure, configure, just like Christ. What will happen? What will happen is that you and I, and as a community of faith, we will translate, we will listen to what Jesus says, love one another. There is no comma or period after that. Because Jesus continues, as I have loved you. Meaning, the model, the paradigm, the measure of loving is Christ on the cross. You wonder why he says, you really want to follow me? Take up your cross. So this is not just a recollection of the last supper meal or institution of the priesthood. We are here again to be one in the spirit of God's holiness. That's a challenge, not from me, but from God, from Christ. But our own soul trinity for you to be sent, for each one of us, in a world where there is, we know, so much injustice and ways wherein we run counter to peace. In a world where faith is down, in a world where we don't want God, in a world where we want to stop this church, Lock it down. Did we not just experience that for so many months or for more than a year? So, very, very important this evening. We are celebrating again, not reliving. We cannot relive that. We cannot even reenact. We can remember. And this comes from not just the church, from Jesus himself where he said, do this in memory of me.
Church through the Eucharist. By this sacrament, may the lives of our Pope, bishops, and priests be rooted in Christ's life, and may generous people respond to God's call to service as priests, deacons, and religious. For this, we pray to the Lord. Christ spreads a table where all are nourished. May we advance along the paths of justice and peace by the strength of this food, and may there be peace in our world, particularly in Ukraine. For this we pray to the Lord. Christ washed the feet of his disciples. May our parish families learn that we are called to serve one another in humility. For this we pray to the Lord. Christ's sacrifice opens us to life in all its fullness. May we sacrifice ourselves for all who are hungry in spirit, mind, or body. For this we pray to the Lord. Christ gives us the Eucharist as a pledge of everlasting life. May those who have died, including the recently deceased and victims of the pandemic and war in Ukraine, find lasting joy at the banquet of heaven. For this we pray to the Lord. Father, if there are prayers that we offer in the name of Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, who gave us his body and blood on this night and on Calvary, who died for us, but those again that it is forever and ever. Amen. Our presentation of this prayer is in three seven zero, Shepherd of Souls, three seven zero.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these sacred mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls. 
in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. <clears throat> celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelian, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ on the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you O God his Almighty Father giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. <laughs> through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.